This example involves making your own redox table. When you're predicting a reaction, you get to list entities from a bunch of reactants only, um, utilizing your data table to make a half reaction and perhaps to make a net reaction. In this case, you're given a bunch of evidence. It's been presented in more than one way. Uh, sometimes it's as a data table. In this case, you're just given a straight reaction and sometimes you have evidence, sometimes you don't. And in order to do this, your job is to first identify, um, you, uh, looking at the reactants, which one is an OA, which one is an RA. The easiest way to do that is by just following the charges. Sometimes you can use your, your general trends, like metals are always reducing agents and whatnot. Um, but safe bet is always is to go by oxidation numbers. Okay? That being said, if you want to use your trends and they work, then go for it. So you're going to use identifying of OA and RA along with the spontaneity rule to make your own redox table. And there's more than one way of doing this. I'll just show you how I like to do it. So in all these examples, on the left hand side, the reactant side, first uh, entity are, is an oxidizing agent, second one is a reducing agent. Now that doesn't have to be the case, that just is in, in this particular example. So, and that makes sense. If you follow the charges I'm, for the cobalt, I'm going from plus two to zero. That means I'm going from positive two to zero, means I'm gaining electrons, I'm getting more negative. Okay, remember that, if oxidation number becomes more negative that means you are gaining electrons which means you're being reduced okay that's very important and the opposite holds true if the oxidation number is becoming more positive that means you're losing electrons which means you're being oxidized okay so Back to the question at hand. So in this case, looking at reaction one only, cobalt two reacts with indium reducing agent to get some products. So it's spontaneous. That tells me that the OA must be above the RA in the table. All these aren't the indium isn't in our table, so that's why we can't actually look at it. But the spontaneity rules tells us that must be the case. So what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to start making my half reaction table. Okay, aligning it the same way as it is given to you in your data booklet. Cobalt 2 plus 2 electrons produces solid cobalt. Okay, well, the indium, we know it has to be below that. So, we've got indium 3 plus 3 electrons produces pure indium. Okay, well that makes sense. Cobalt half um, oxidizing agent, just like we have up here is above the indium reducing agent just like we have right there therefore a spontaneous reaction so that makes sense all right let's look at so now we're done with reaction one reaction two we've got a copper ion oxidizing agent reacting with cobalt reducing agent to get a reaction evidence was produced therefore I know I'm dealing with a spontaneous reaction so now I can again say the OA Copper 2 must be above cobalt. Well, I already have cobalt right here. I have that cobalt half reaction, which means now I can put the copper half reaction above it. Okay, write it in. Then we're just going to see if it makes sense. This is a check. And we said it's, sponta it's spontaneous, therefore, the copper 2 oxidizing agent. Copper 2 oxidizing agent is above the cobalt reducing agent, therefore spontaneous. Makes sense. Good. All right, now the last reaction. Okay, we're done with the second one. Last one, we have copper two oxidizing agent and the palladium reducing agent, but this time there is no evidence of reaction. It's non-spontaneous. So what does that mean? Right, that means the reducing agent, in this case palladium, must be above the oxidizing agent. 
which means palladium is above copper. Well, I already have copper in place right here, so that means the palladium must be above it. Okay, and then it said here, and it didn't get a reaction, but there still would be some some infinitesimal amount of reactions occurring, so there is going to be palladium four around. So if we have one, we can always assume we have the other. Usually it will tell you if it isn't indicated directly. And there's my half reaction table. And I can finish it off. This is my SOA. The indium metal would be my SRA. Then I can answer a whole swack of questions from out of that. These often come in the form of numerical response where you have to rank in either increasing or decreasing order of strength of oxidizing agents or reducing agents or a metal's ability to lose electrons or ions ability to gain.